So this morning as I flip the battery chargers, I'm reminded every one of these restorations, even the ones I don't own anymore that I did years and years ago, every one of these takes on a life of its own. I always think I can predict the future, I can predict how it's going to go, how the winter is going to play out. And in the past, we've had as many as three or four restorations for other people going on. We only have the one this year, Turbo Steve's. And fortunately enough, uh, that's keeping us plenty busy. But everyone is different. Everyone is a unique adventure. And I wouldn't trade any of them. I've enjoyed every one of them. So yesterday, Luciano and I picked up that with Steve that a 400 Yamaha. He's already found a cafe tank for it. He's already found some, uh, I'm not sure, a seat, a tank and a seat. And he's already very excited about his next restoration. So we always have a restoration on the way. And I always think at this point in my life, if I wasn't busy, I'd just be waiting to die. So as I, ha as I have to do every morning, it's the same routine. I want to sequence what I'm able to do today. It's 28 degrees out there right now. It may warm up, it may not. If it did warm up, one of the things I'd like to do is get some of these parts in clear for Steve. He's in Texas. The decal repair we did look like it's working out fine. This one looks perfect, in fact. So, at least I, uh, in my mind now, I feel confident that those decals are not going to come sliding off this when we put the clear on. But again, we'll see. So based on the weather and based on the fact that we usually, this time of year, between the holidays, we usually have company come over unexpectedly. I don't like to start any big projects. I do want to lay out some of the uh, ideas I had for this FCR logo. So you're probably thinking, hey, you know, you've been into this restoration. We're into the middle of the third month of this restoration, and you haven't figured out what you want to do about some of these decal logo things. Well, it's because this is what happened in my years of building model planes. I'd always wait to the bottom of the ninth with two out and the count three and two, and then I'd make a decision. And it's a very bad habit I have, but one of the things I could never finalize in, in my mind on this restoration, I, I dreamed about several things here. Now, I don't want to fill the bike with stickers like it's a race bike. That's not the look I'm looking for. I'm not trying to make a fake race bike or, if, or pretend that this is a race bike. This is just a replica of a bike, supposedly, that Honda... Oh, Honda that Yamaha might have made, uh, well, <laughs> maybe, who knows. But it's a, it's a unique thing, and part of that design, part of it in my mind, is I really wanted to have some unique lettering go on here. And I've not made my mind up yet, and it's been several days I've been really intensely thinking about it. So the answer is to have my coffee, get out my chip foos pens, get out my list of stuff, and I made up the first few the other night, it was late at night. I don't know if it's a starting point. I have a list of what I wanted to try. So today I may spend some time or maybe most of the time cutting and trying to get this to evolve to where I'm happy with it. And it's going to be a focal point of the bike. So now my idea today was, and this, this is, it sounds funny, but it's not real funny. Karen watches this show called Chopped. It's a cooking show and they start with X amount of cooks and then they keep chopping people. You're eliminated, you're eliminated, you're eliminated. Well, basically what I'm going to try to do today in this time window I have, and I don't know if it's going to end suddenly because we have company. We have a lot of people that just show up. And, uh, well, we do it to them too. So. But anyway, I, I started with my list. Just to back up the other day, I had the list. I made up some of the things. Tried to make a list of the pluses and minuses. Now... The reason this is so critical, and I remember this from doing the two Ferrari motorcycles, my good friend John Cafaro, who has a lot of design, automotive design experience, many years in fact, and convinced me how important badging was. They call it badging in the automotive industry. Making that logo that says Hemi or says Camaro or, or whatever, it's, a, it's irrelevant what it is. It's a key part of design. So anyway, I started with this. And what I do is, it's the old thing chopped. I look at it, I go place it on the motorcycle, and then look at the other side and I say, now I got to lean the letters this way. And so I've, in my mind, I've already I'll chopped this. This one is chopped. This one I liked a lot more for some reasons, 
and I want to show up on a motorcycle, this is how I do it. Not, it's not like this is a secret, uh, we're building a rocket to the moon here or anything. Some little rolls of tape on the back and I can kind of envision it. But what I'll do is a combination of when I get close to what I want, then I'll look at the computer and I'll try to fine tune it. And what I'll try to do is make a final rendition in full size that I can use for pattern because obviously I want to go and put it on the other side. Now the advantage of using straight up and down letters is it works on both sides. You don't have to lean them this way and then they look funny. See the FZR logo looks funny when you lean the letters backwards. At least I didn't like it. And it's all subjective anyway. But anyway, these, if I put them on both sides, exactly the same. So that's a little advantage. Now I'm not sure I like the layout. It just looks too blocky to me. But, but this is a starting point. So what I plan to do today, I'm going to start. I got a, a bunch of paper here. I'm going to make this same size shape letter because I know that's the size I need. I'm going to make them leaning forward a little bit, see if I like it better. Make it, there's one on the internet I saw, but I think it's a custom one. The guy made it a little bit thicker and it kind of the letters all flowed together, but again, every one is custom anyway. So, But that, that's going to be a very, very important part. And I know, I've had, I've had over a year to think about this, and I still can't make up my mind. So I feel like an old lady buying gavilta fish, but I want that fish, I want that fish, I want that I really am an old lady though. Anyway, we're going to start. I want to lay this on a bike and see how it looks. So when I look at this, I just colored this thing in with an old Sharpie marker. Here's the other issue here. I wanted to pick up this angle in the lettering line or, or both, this angle. Those angles are pretty similar. So if I could lay out the letters that I was happy with them with that angle and then the other side would be the reverse angle, eh, that, that would be pretty nice. But I don't want to run the letter into this, the mount, because then it's going to have a big chunk missing out of it. So. And I don't want to run it right up to the edge. I also thought, because I have a parallel line here, I can run the top edge of the letter to the parallel line. That'll be nice. Or I can run it to the bottom or mean average in the middle. So that it, it looks like it's coming this way. But the first thing I didn't like about, I tried several times just in my mind to make this just get bigger in the front and then pick up this angle. And it, it never really looks right to me. It never has the look of like the factory would have done that. It starts to look too much like uh, like modern art or something. So I wanted to show just how I do one of these because I'm going to do several. I don't know how many yet. But I know this is the space I want to fill. So very making this as simple as can be. I'll put a dot here, a dot here. And not critical because when I do this with tape, I'll measure all the angles and everything and I'll get it exact. But I want to lay out on a piece of office paper, ordinary office paper, kind of cut and dry. And I think once you see this once, you can, at least this is my way of doing it. Now, if you do it by computer, and I'm sure, I'm sure John would do this by computer. At, but in the, in the end, this way, I, since I'm, this is a rough thing, I'm roughing this in. Now I want to see that angle because I want to divide this up. I want to see that angle. And I'm going to just do this by eye. I'm going to just make it make a, a a little template of what that angle is, just to look at this, and then factor that angle into it. I'm just working off this edge, and I've got a rough idea, very rough, what that what that angle is. So I'll I'll measure this now. If I reverse it, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not exactly, but it doesn't matter. This would be the defining line. I'd like to. To reference off. Now I'm just thinking if I flip this, it almost picks up the angle of that. So it's the letters if they come here would look. I don't. To be honest, I don't know until I make up some mock-ups. But making these mock-ups is very easy. All you need is office paper and an afternoon that uh, you don't have too many people visiting you. So now I know what this angle is, and of course each side is going to be different. So if I lay out one side, I want the letters to be leaning forward. Just roughly, this just gets me this.
and of course I got to do the same thing here again because this is a rough thing. Now it, the, here's the problem that I had with the first little thing I made. When these letters lay over there's a point at which they start to look like <coughs> so it's a very critical thing but one of the things I'll do is I'll take this angle divide it in half called interpolation. Now by doing it if I do the actual angle I know I've already done it. These letters look <coughs> so what I want to do just to satisfy myself is cut that angle in half called interpolation in, uh, in aviation anyway where you take the one number that what's too big and what's too small and you go right in the middle. When you trim an aeroplane that's how you do it. Oh, this is too much, this is not enough or you jet a two-stroke. So now I know I can get rid of this line. That's the actual line and I've got the interpolated line. It's starting to sound real scientific but it isn't. Because when I watch the guy from Bitchin' Rides or Chip Foos or any of them, people that have genuine talent, and of course I don't, that's, don't, don't remind me, but I have to do everything like a crude way and have to do it with my mind's eye over and over and over to achieve what I want. A talented person will look at that and go, Shh, I'm sure, but I, unfortunately I'm in a league where I have to do it this way. So now the next thing is I want to divide this into three equal pieces. And then that's a, uh, you never know, that could, that could be more of an adventure than you think it is. Uh, uh, let's see if we got it. No, not really. We're off just a little bit, but that's okay. But now, just by eye, since we're doing this just by eye, I'll, I'll line this up. Now when the Greeks made the Parthenon, they realized right away the, the pillars of the Parthenon do this. They go out and come back. They're not straight because as you walk back, your eye, it tricks your eye into thinking they're straight. So sometimes to make something look right, you have to make it wrong by a little bit anyway. And, and I think this is one of them. I think by dividing that angle in half, these are going to look a lot more realistic. So now from this point on, it's a question of just laying out the letters. Now just to make this easy what I've been doing, because this is the thickness of the letters, I've just been doing laying it out in tape. We can look at this and fast forward because this is going to take some time. Now the tape makes this easy to make little changes. Here are the changes that I thought made it a little different. This, of course, I need to leave that, that little gap, but making this Z come way out into the F. I modified this, making this little, ta little tang and this little guy up here. So now the decision is, and you would think, well, oh, these are easy decisions. Of course, I got to lay it out in reverse because it has the angle the other way. But I don't know if this is going to look okay on the other side. And because this is all in the eye of the beholder, you can have 10 of your friends come over and five will like it and five will hate it. But I have Karen, but she usually hates everything I do. She says, paint it pink. <laughs> anyway, the one advantage of this, and it's not an advantage because I got to lay it out and tape both ways, but I want it to look the same. I don't want it to have the letters going backwards. So this does not look offensive to me when it's laid out like this. Now, because when it's laid out in this dimension, I might even think about making that tail just a little bit longer because I'll be laying this all out in tape. But this is one of the prototypes that I can pick from and then I can go to Chopped and chop the ones I don't like. So here on a computer I can get a little look at the badge and the tail on the F, that's a different tail, it's straight and I see the well, the R has a round. I don't want to have any round things on here. I want to have, if I get to that, I want angles. There's a good, pretty good view of the badge. 
these are all not not of course the models that I have but gives me ideas it's always about the ideas and then I interpolate them now to be honest to be really honest I like my logo better than the real FCR one <laughs> but I'm not prejudiced of course I'm remembering John Caffaro so many times when we were doing those Ferrari motorcycles how important the badging was how super important Here's one I hadn't seen before, but he's got the FZR on the back tail, which I had anticipated doing. But see, he's got the little one here and the big one on the tail. Well, again, it's nice to see this in real life before you make a commitment. Now, here's somebody. Of course, he doesn't have the uh, ladders, but and I don't even know how many these paint jobs or uh, Yamaha paint jobs and how many somebody improvised, but th this... Because I have the uh, the ladders there, this is not impossible. I have to use other parts of the bike to put this. So, but but what this is going to do for me that I'm happy with is there'll never be another one exactly like mine. It is so many variations on the FCR, and to be honest, the, as I look at a lot of them on my computer screen, the stock FZR logo I'm not crazy about. I'm. I like some of the people that have tried to customize them, and, and I, I think I'm going to be happier with the one I do. But who knows? I may come to live it to regret that decision. Anyway, the FCR is such a common motorcycle. They made so many of them over so many years, that uh, so many models, that uh, we, can, we have a pretty free hand. We don't have to worry somebody's going to say, oh, they never made that, because, because they didn't. So in the last week or so, the thing I learned about Yamaha FZR logoing and badging is there's so many variations that this is going to be perfect. Nobody, nobody is going to see it and say, oh, that isn't the way to badge it. They're not, because they're not going to know anyway. I don't even know. I wouldn't even know what's factory correct, and, uh, and I don't care either. But I know I want to have the FZR logo here, FZR 1000. I don't want to have it up on a fairing. I'd like to have my custom logo up on the fairing. And after after thinking about this for a lot of times, that's pretty pretty brutal that I feel that way. But my mind changes. Like I said, I'm, I'm like an old lady shopping for gavilta fish. So now part of my next interpolation here, because I think I'm zeroing in on having something I'm really happy with. And I like having this. I like having that. I, and I'm doing this chop thing. I don't like that. I don't like this. I like that. So now as a comparison, I look at that and that looks, mm, yeah, that looks not exactly like what I had in mind. So I think this is going to look a little, mm, a little more like it. But anyway, um, the defining things here are that they always put the, the little cross and they always had something funky on the end of that. But I can add this. That'll add a little dimension. But now, here's what I'm doing. You see how I've changed this angle? I'm going to angle the whole thing. I, I went half the dimension. This is the full scoop. This is half the scoop. Now I'm going to three quarters of the scoop angle. So that little extra angle, then I can look at, do I like? I'm interpolating. This is too much. This is not enough. I'm putting that angle right in the middle. I'll lay this out with boxes and tape and see which one I like better. I'm not sure if you can see this. This, this is a, a shrunk down version. I shrunk it down enough so I could put, and it fits on both sides. And actually, it, it does not pick up the angle now because I've moved the angle over. But I like it better. And so I'm not so concerned with it. And I'm going to put that halfway for each. It fits on both sides too. So this will be one advantage is I only have to make one template. Not that that's a big deal, but it'll, I think it'll look better. I don't like the, I just don't like those letters. And I have this angle now three quarters of the way. I did one 90, halfway, and then halfway between the angle. So it's a three quarter, three quarters of a lay down interpolation.
so maybe the most important thing I can share from this video is when I looked at this and and I looked at the other ones that I've done the coal and paper dollies I I realized one of the things and this is what's what the advantage of doing it the way I'm doing actually with tape is okay but you could do it with drawing lines too I wanted this angle and I can do it this way just minimize the the adventure of doing this I want more of an angle on this see because what happens as you lay this angle down the Z starts to look hokey it I don't like the way that the Z doesn't look like it's you know I want Zorro not sure what I want but anyway but just by doing this I don't have to do a whole nother grid I can just come back here and do this get my angle and if I don't like this I'll do another angle so that's the advantage see the advantage of this is I like this point coming out into the F's uh, area and if you think this is easy I know everybody thinks the only guy it's easy to is somebody like Vince that's a trained artist Somebody that really has an eye for this stuff, and I sure don't. But if I make this come out a little bit more, that's too much. See, this is this is where it gets to be in a mind's eye. Is that enough? Hmm. That starts to look like Zorro. Hope, I hope you don't mind me singing. But I'm trying to share how I've done this for literally... 50 years of model planes, maybe more. I hate to admit it's more, but it really is. And I've I've been self-taught. I've learned it all on my own. And I, I don't use computers that much unless John is looking over my shoulder and keeping me from becoming a terrorist. So, And I'm not sure he's doing a good job because I'm becoming a terrorist here with this lettering. I've spent a lot of time that you really don't see on a video thinking about this. But I think by sharing it, You'll, you'll get the idea. You'll figure it out. And we go actually to lay this out in tape within, uh, I hope, in the next couple of days. We sure have been fighting the weather for this last month. Wow. It's incredible how bad the weather has been. But we've survived. Barely. <laughs> and we got Luciano, that new bike for him to work on. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's out there ripping it apart as we speak. Now, I don't know until I actually lay this out. There's Luciano calling me on the phone right now. Great phone call. Luciano told me he's really having fun working on the 400. The, the bike we picked up yesterday, I'm surprised he doesn't have it running by now, but he said the motor is frozen up. This is important. When I look at this from several angles, if I make it parallel to this angle, I really don't like it. Parallel to that angle, I don't like it. So I've interpolated that I'm right in the middle. And a nice thing about this, the nice thing about this whole operation so far, and that's what I've tried to get across in this video. Let me see if I can do this right on camera. Take the same thing right over to our, uh, our no lettering one here. I'm not sure we can pick this up, but... And I think I've closed in on it. Now, the trick is I'm going to th sit and think about this and uh, think about what I can do about this. And I, well, I'll probably send a picture to John so he can give me his opinion and see how that all works out. Anyway, we're at the end of this video, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And, of course, thanks. Thanks for being an, F an FZR, whatever that stands for. Anyway. We've had a good time working on these logos. I hope you've picked up some good information. And wow, we're still in a holiday season. A very happy new year and the best of all good things to your family from Karen and I. I'm going to go eat some cookies.